All right, guys, so in this video, we're going to learn about the IMF and the SDR. So the IMF's core responsibility is to provide resources to its members experiencing actual or potential balance of payments problems. So they can't pay their debts. They have too much debt compared to how much money they have, in a sense. So meaning that the country cannot find sufficient funding for affordable terms to meet its net international payment. So then we got the key term. So the International Monetary Fund is the first key term. And then you're going to want to know the special drawing rights, the SDR. So the International Monetary Fund, or the IMF, is a cooperative monetary organization. It was established in 1945 with 185 member countries. So the IMF is a system of exchange rates and international currencies that enables countries and citizens to transact with one another. So now with the special drawing right. So the SDR serves as a unit of account. Remember we learned about the Bancor? So remember we learned about the Bancor. It was supposed to be a universal unit of account. So now we have the International Monetary Fund, right? And remember, John Maron Keynes, he was the political economist that put forward the ideas of that governments could stick their foot into all types of trade, capitalism, and things of that nature, and help out economies and make them boom. And he proposed the idea of having the bank or remember? So that was the universal pseudonymous currency that was supposed to be a universal standard of account. And right here, we have the IMF. That's an international organization. So a world currency is also international. And the Cooperative Monetary Organization established in 1945 at Bretton Woods at the conference with John Maron Keynes, where he proposed the Bancor. And then since that didn't fall through, they didn't end up going with that proposal. He then formed the creation of the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, which the IMF has the special drawing rights, the SDRs, which sound very similar to that Bancor proposal that we had mentioned before that they shelled. I think they shelled it in their back pocket, if, if you were to ask me. But being the US dollar is the most prominent currency, it's the most important currency at our time at this moment. So that's what we really need to understand and recognize that we can look into the future, but we still need to be present in the moment. So by keeping in mind that key principle, you'll be set because you're able to look to the future, but stay grounded and you'll be able to be like floating on top, looking down, really seeing everything at a bird's eye view and you'll have such a handle on everything going on. You'll really see what's going on. So the SDR, similar to the bank or serves as a unit of account for the IMF. So the value is based on a basket of currencies. And what consists of that basket? World reserve currencies. Being the US dollar is the most prominent, that's the most important one to look at at this time. But eventually, you know, we're looking into the future, there could be a shift of world reserve currencies as we're gonna learn in the next couple of uh, videos here. You'll see that every 100 years, there's a change of world reserve currencies. That's what we're gonna be going into, but we're still, the US dollar is the king right now. So we're gonna still go with that. Just like we play the charts level by level, we're gonna play what's going on in the world level by level. And which was funny because that John Maron Keynes guy, he said, when the facts change, I alter my conclusions. What do you do, sir? So I, I love that because it's so true with trading and just with what's going on in general and just life in general, when facts change, you gotta be able to shift and you gotta be able to adapt quickly or you may get stuck in a false reality of what's going on and you didn't really see what's going on over there, right? So that's why when the facts change, we alter our conclusions and we need to be aware of everything that's going on. We need to have a 360 like an owl. We're spinning, we're spinning, our head's turning, right? We're looking what's going on around us we're being aware, we're being grounded, and we're taking action behind the scenes. And just like Keynes proposed, so he had a testimony and a belief that national and supranational economic planning is both necessary and possible. So supranational, that means the whole world in general, not just a country, on a country level. Think of the country being like a micro look and the world being that macro look. So the supranational compared to the national, right? He said that was both necessary and possible. And he proposed that bank or they shelved it, shelved it in their back pocket, and they proposed the IMF and the World Bank, and they slid in that bank or under a new name, most likely called the SDR Special Drawing Rights. So keep your eyes on the special drawing rights. Something's going on over there, and it must have to do with blockchain and having that SDR run on blockchain technology and DLT, distributed ledger technology, which is the underpinnings of what cryptocurrencies lie on. So with that being the case, it makes total sense because blockchain technology, if it's underpinning the SDR, there's so many capabilities that could come along with that, it only makes sense. If they weren't to do it, they'd be doing themselves a huge disservice. So we know it's coming, it's coming down the line. We just wanna know who's involved and how we can get a piece of it. So the purpose of the IMF is to help governments manage the challenges posed by globalization and economic development. So the key activities of the IMF, they can be classified under three areas. They lend, they surveil, and they have capacity building. So these activities promote policies and they promote strategies through which members can work together to ensure a stable world financial system and sustainable economic growth. So most resources for the IMF's loans are provided by member countries primarily through their payments of quotas. So one of the key things that the IMF does as well is they provide liquidity to the global financial system. So liquidity is how quickly you can get in and out of something, right? So if something's very liquid, that means billions, trillions of dollars, they can be trading back and forth with no major dent in the price swings. It can be very stable. And that's what the overall arching goal is a stable currency we don't want it to decline too much we don't want it to rise too much you want a deep liquid currency that can be easily and freely exchanged in and out of as quickly efficiently cheaply and cost effectively sustainably securely and safely and transparently as possible and that's through blockchain technology hands down there's no other technology right now at this stage that's on the brink of mass adoption that has those capabilities if you're new to crypto or if you've been in crypto for a while and you still don't feel like you have a strategy then we have the perfect thing for you because it's one thing to have a strategy but 
It's another thing to automate that strategy. So what we're doing right now is a waterfall flash sale. This is the start of week one. We just launched our Stargate automated experience, which gives you access to utilize our custom automatic trading bots that we built for XRP, XLM, HBAR, Algorand, and a bunch of other altcoins. If you're sick and tired of watching the charts every single day, worrying, stressing, guessing about prices, and if it's going to go up or down, then look no further than this, because this is the holy grail for any crypto holder or trader. So liquidity is important because liquidity was the problem of the last financial crash in 2009. The markets had a lack of liquidity and banks busted and they got bankrupt and it had a devastating effect over the economy with a real estate crash and mortgages. With an alternate system running on blockchain technology and a world soon anonymous currency that has a deep liquid pool of it exchanged in and out of with ease, it's game changer and this is where the direction's headed to because that liquidity and a mechanism like that could potentially save a big crash in the future. There's also a scenario that we talk about an impending crash what if they divert a crash by having a mechanism that we're talking about right now that can have a deep liquid pool of liquidity that if there was a constraint on the global financial system and markets, it would be able to kind of sponge it in and then absorb it and push it back up and slowly lift it up. There could be a scenario like that. We're just looking at all the scenarios just like we do with trading and we're making our assumptions and we're drawing the facts and the conclusions together based off of stuff that we find and articles that we read and the connections, people that we're really tracking and seeing and the years and time that I personally seen this play out. I've been seeing this play out for five years now ever since I kind of learned about this stuff and I'm sure other people were on it earlier than me. I found out about it uh, five years ago and that was when I was around like 20. So this is game changer stuff. I'm glad that I learned about it. The earlier you learn about it, the better. So if you feel like you're a little upset because you're just finding out about all this stuff and if you knew some of this stuff earlier on, you could have been set and you would have saw certain things. That's how I felt. I always used to say if I would have been older during the time of the internet uh, boom and that kind of industrial revolution there, then I felt like I would have caught on to Facebook. I would have caught on to Apple. I would have caught on to some of these things. And then as I was going through and I found cryptocurrency and blockchain and really dug in, I found that this opportunity is a hundred times larger because we're talking about a whole internet and replacement of value and the way we exchange just conversations, the way we interact with value and money and transacting and buying goods and services. That's the core mechanism of how we function as a society. So this is huge. So also too, the value of the SDR is updated daily and defined by a basket of major currencies used in the world's most important trading and financial system. So we have the US dollar, the Euro, the Chinese renminbi, the Japanese yen and the UK pound sterling. Those world currencies are all a part of the special drawing rights, the IMS SDR. And the SDR's interest rate is adjusted weekly based on the short-term interest rates of government securities of the currencies in the SDR basket. They already have like a mechanism in place to kind of keep it stable and have that interest rate balance out. So put that on blockchain technology, that solution's ready to go and they could roll it out right now. They probably already have it ready to go right now as we speak. They're just waiting for a moment to do it. But how does SDRs help provide liquidity to the global financial system? So members can exchange SDRs for freely usable currencies held by other members. And this brings down their SDR holdings, but provides them with a currency to either help meet balance of payment needs or add to their own reserves. So members can also use their SDRs to pay IMF loans. And members with strong external external position, so who have more liquid currency on their balance of payments, they can then use their SDR holdings to contribute to the financing of low income countries by lending to the Poverty Reduction and Growth Trust. So the IMS guiding principle is that any use of SDR should be consistent with macroeconomic sustainability, but also provide space for times of crises, such as the pandemic. They already tried, and I believe they tried to do it when I believe Trump was in office and Trump declined them doing it. He didn't want them to print more SDRs because the more that they print more SDRs, the more that now they get control. Just like the more that the Federal Reserve prints money in our system in our economy, the more they get control over us, the more that the IMF has more SDRs printed and they get to loan them out, the more now they have control over everybody else in the whole world. So that's the flow of like the order of the pyramid and really looking at following the money. Who really runs it at the top? So who really runs it at the top? It's the IMF. So when we're following the money, the IMF is at the top, the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank. Then you have another international body called the Bank of International Settlements. And those three are at the pillar at the top. They're at the top of the pyramid. And then you go down, then you have regular central banks. And then you go down from that, you have like the banks like Bank of America, Citizens Bank. And then you go below that you have the corporations and then below that you have the governments and then below that you have us so we're at the bottom and we're trying to climb our way up and we're going to do it we're on to the next biggest thing of our time so i hope you guys have no worries just sit back relax be patient do your homework be convicted through education have that power to sit on your hands be level-minded and really just map this out because you map this out you do the math you'll be there so so sdrs serve as an international reserve asset that can be converted into other reserve currencies with the help of other member countries this enables imf countries to have access to unconditional liquidity so there's a crypto that we talk about a lot that has a product, a part of their cryptocurrency and blockchain solutions that they sell to banks called on-demand liquidity. And now you have the IMF basically functions as an unconditional liquidity provider through the IMF member country. So the IMF member countries have access to unconditional liquidity through the SDRs, and that just gets the IMF's power bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's it for this video. Are you sick and tired of just stressing and guessing, holding and hoping and watching the crypto market go through its ups and downs and not doing anything about it? 
If you're someone in that position, then look no further than the Stargate automated experience. We just launched it and we built custom automated trading bots for XRP, XLM, HBAR, and a bunch of other utility coins. If that sounds of interest to you and you want to learn more, click the video below and I'll see you over there.